Florida Rep. Matt Gates, a controversial political figure and far-right conservative, has opposed Kevin McCarthy as a Republican leader for months. And over the weekend, his threats to remove McCarthy from speakership have become much more serious. In light of Gates' recent threats, McCarthy responded, You know what, if somebody wants to remove because I want to be the adult in the room, go ahead and try. But why are the two feuding in the first place? In the final hours of the deadline to fund the government, Kevin McCarthy, the current Speaker of the House, was able to avoid a government shutdown by passing a bipartisan spending bill. But in McCarthy's choice to narrowly avoid a shutdown by working with Democrats, he angered many extreme conservatives in the process, with 21 Republican representatives voting against the legislation. And it's become the last straw in the eyes of some GOP Congress members, specifically Gates, who has voiced his intentions to oust the Speaker by the end of the week. I do intend to file a motion to vacate against Speaker McCarthy this week. I think we need to this rip week. off the Band-Aid. I think we need to move on with new leadership that can be trustworthy. When CNN's Jake Tapper asked how much support Gates had in his effort to get rid of McCarthy, the Florida rep said, Enough so that when you host this show next week, if Kevin McCarthy is still the Speaker of the House, he will be serving at the pleasure of the Democrats. But why does Gates believe he has the power to remove the Republican leader of the House of Representatives? Well, it's because McCarthy gave him that power earlier this year. Gates and McCarthy are both Republican representatives in Congress, but they've been feuding since January. Republicans won a slim majority of seats in the House of Representatives in the 2022 elections. But when it came time to vote for Speaker of the House at the beginning of this year, this slim majority meant McCarthy needed nearly every Republican member to vote for him to win the position. This meant that any Republican not already loyal to McCarthy had a lot of power in making demands to earn their vote. And the far-right Freedom Caucus took advantage of this. For McCarthy to finally win the speakership, it took a total of 15 rounds of voting and even a brief physical altercation. This is the highest number of voting rounds since the Civil War era in the United States. One of Gates' demands for his vote was to loosen House rules to require only a single member of Congress to initiate a vote to remove the Speaker, something Gates had hoped would force McCarthy to side with far-right conservatives to avoid losing his position. Now, Gates is claiming that McCarthy's actions have broken the promises he made to his Republican detractors in January, and he wants to move forward with initiating the Speaker's removal. But, funnily enough, Gates would need to convince Democrats to side with him to gain enough votes to remove McCarthy, the same thing that he's frustrated with the Speaker over, and something that Democrats are not too interested in getting involved in. In response to Gates' statements, McCarthy, who chose to work in a bipartisan way with Democrats instead of becoming further indebted to far-right conservatives, is claiming that he's ready for these attacks. Bring it on, let's get over with it, and let's start governing. If he's upset because he tried to push us in a shutdown, and I made sure government didn't shut down, then let's have that fight. And McCarthy isn't alone. He still holds the favor of the majority of House Republicans, many of whom spoke out against members like Gates throughout September, voicing their opposition to the detractors' threats of creating a government shutdown. And now, the tables have turned, with a group of Republican representatives looking to instead expel Gates from the House because of his actions against McCarthy and the majority of the GOP members. So, with Gates' promise that McCarthy will lose his speakership by the end of the week and many House Republicans becoming fed up with Gates' controversial moves, the first week of October is looking to have a lot of twists and turns for the House of Representatives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to raise a question. What was the secret side deal on Ukraine? House Democrats and President Biden have said that as Speaker McCarthy was asking Republicans to vote for a continuing resolution so as to avoid having to take the Senate's plus up in Ukraine money, that the Speaker of the House was actually cutting a side deal to bring Ukraine legislation to this floor with President Biden and House Democrats. So let me get this straight. To extend Joe Biden's spending and Joe Biden's policy priorities, the Speaker of the House gave away to Joe Biden the money for Ukraine that Joe Biden wanted. It is going to be difficult for my Republican friends to keep calling President Biden feeble while he continues to take Speaker McCarthy's lunch money in every negotiation. The Speaker of the House has responded to these reports of a secret side deal on money for Ukraine, opaquely stating that he still wants to fund Ukraine and our border. I have a few replies to this statement. First, the Speaker's statement confirms the existence of a secret deal. And I have talked to members of our own leadership who have said they didn't even know 
that Speaker McCarthy was negotiating a secret side deal outside of our conference, outside of his own leadership team, for the sake of Ukraine. Second, Ukraine has lost the support of a majority of the majority. The last time there was a freestanding Ukraine vote on this floor, it was last week. 101 Republicans voted for it, 117 Republicans voted against it. According to the Hastert rule, which Speaker McCarthy agreed to in January, you cannot use Democrats to roll a majority of the majority, certainly on something as consequential as Ukraine. So for all the crocodile tears about what may happen later this week about a motion to vacate, working with the Democrats is a yellow brick road that has been paved by Speaker McCarthy, whether it was the debt limit deal, the CR, or now the secret deal on Ukraine. For, or third. This is swampy log rolling. The American people deserve single subject bills. I get that a lot of folks might disagree with my perspectives on the border or on Ukraine, but can we at least agree that no matter how you feel about Ukraine or the southern border, they each deserve the dignity of their own consideration and should not be rolled together where they might pass where each individually wouldn't? This is what we're trying to get away from. This is the spirit of the January agreement we made with the speaker. No more lashing these disparate issues together so that the American people's interests are subjugated here on the floor of the House. You know how we should stand up for our border? Demand that the United States State Senate take up our single subject appropriation bill that funded the border. It created Republican unity. We voted for it. It has the policy demands that the continuing resolution that Speaker McCarthy advocated for on this floor did not. Our DHS funding bill requires you verify. And then hours later after we passed that, the speaker wanted us to vote for a continuing resolution that didn't include e-verify. Retreat is never a strategy to win anything. So Mr. Speaker, just tell us, just tell us, what was in the secret Ukraine side deal? What commitments were made to, pre to President Biden to continue the spending of President Biden in exchange for doing things for President Biden. It is becoming increasingly clear who the Speaker of the House already works for, and it's not the Republican conference. Mr. Speaker, I would ask that these questions be answered soon because there may be other votes coming today or later this week that could, could be implicated by the answers to these questions. Members of the Republican Party might vote differently on a motion to vacate if they heard what the speaker had to share with us about his secret side deal with Joe Biden on Ukraine. I'll be listening. Stay tuned. And I yield back.